what friends, it's I, Railchire, and today we are going to look at a trebuchet that I've designed. However, it's not the same kind of trebuchet when you think of a large counterweight, counterweight um, pulling a arm down and launching a projectile. No, this is a slightly smaller, older cousin of the trebuchet. This is the traction trebuchet. The traction trebuchet operates on, instead of having a counterweight, it has a series of ropes and a crew just pulling down on those ropes and that proceeds to launch the projectile up. These were common in the very early medieval period and they lasted quite a while through to the late, um, probably the 13th century is probably the last example we find. Um, and they're used alongside counterweight trebuchets in the 13th century. By the 14th and 15th century, I would be—I haven't seen a lot of sources for them, but um, I figured they'd be, this is a good example of just an underused trebuchet design. So, here is one that I've designed and built in Blender. Here, real quick, just giving you an idea of the structure of it. So it's got this arm right here, kind of shaped like a rake, and that is where you'd attach your ropes to. There's some controversy over whether or not that arm should be shaped like a rake and more horizontal or shaped like an axe and and uh, more vertical right on my on my design I've just chosen to make that um, those splayed out arms be vertical um, due to a number of reasons but there's an academic paper published by the experimental archaeology magazine that I really um, followed pretty close so I'll link that down in the description for details on that but I just started with a bunch of 4x4s and 2x4s and started cutting some joinery. I used all hand tools for this. Um, it's all connected with like wooden pegs and lashing and stuff. So it ended up being quite period accurate to in the construction and also gives it the added advantage that I can disassemble this because it's a very large machine. Being able to dis disassemble it and throw it in the bed of a truck or on a trailer or something is a huge, a huge advantage. So here I've just cut notches there and you can see how it all fits together. It was quite an easy project. Uh, most of this base, the base of the trebuchet I did in one day. So here's these couple pieces finished. And I've got a saw, some mortises and tenons. I started out making these look like dovetails, but you can kind of ignore that because I ended up going for a simpler mortise and tenon design for these to fit into the uprights. These are basically just the braces that keep the upright post, the central one, from leaning too far forward or backwards. And you can see that I'm chiseling things out and just making this kind of this dovetail shape, which I ended up just making in, you know, cutting it flat and making it into a mortise and tenon and getting it slotted into that upright 4x4. There's a lot of trial and error on this project, doing things too quickly, not thinking about it too much, and coming back later and realizing that there was a problem with the way I had fundamentally designed it. Got one A-frame, completely done. I guess I wouldn't call this an A-frame, but it is. And then we gotta chisel out the mortises. The mortises are the wooden basically slots that the are the braces have to fit into the braces fit into it with the tenon so the tenon is the smaller piece that fits inside the mortise on a lot of construction they would be pegged or they would be they would go all the way through the arm and be pegged that way um, but in this case I've just used lashing to secure it because I don't have a lot of wood to work with to drive a peg through A traditional joinery like this is really rewarding because you end up being able to fine tune how everything fits together and once you finish it it's just you know it's it's a lot more rewarding of an experience I used a similar construction method on my hand cart and if you didn't see my hand cart project um, go ahead and take a look at that I'll post that in the description um, but despite the fact that not all my tools are medieval they're at least hand tools the only time I did end up using a modern drill was to drill some smaller holes for this mortise and then I just chiseled them out so 
you could have done the same thing with the big auger bit that I had to. And here's the completed structure. And then real quick I made a sling out of some rope and a piece of leather and it was pretty straightforward. The sling's about the right size to be able to throw a squash or a small pumpkin or something. And then I took me I took our reenactment crew out to a friend of mine who had a field and some land and we can we basically transferred all the project over to his yard instead of mine because I only have a backyard that's only big enough to build this thing in but not big enough to throw it to shoot anything so here we are in our garb I'm trying to assemble it just kind of a time lapse too so you can see all these pegs just fit together and you hammer the pegs in and it's basically wooden big big wooden nails but a lot of advantages over nails is that they don't bend they're not going to be pulled out they're a lot stronger than nails except they can be pulled out um, front ways and back ways they just reserve they just resist being pulled apart um, across the grain of the peg you can obviously hammer the peg back out or sometimes if they're not tight enough it, it causes trouble too but easily you can see these two a-frames just sort of set together you, you set them up and then if that lar if you see that large post that I'm sitting next to that just goes across the two pieces as they're upright those notches fit over the beam and it all works out well just making sure everything is tight because you don't want any looseness in the machine in a machine that's throwing rocks and pumpkins and other projectiles over your head you want it all to be reliable so we end up lashing this later on but there's a lot of trial and error to get it to fit right each time because if the ground isn't level it changes you know the, how your whole trebuchet sits the good thing about this though is because it's so small and so light compared to like a full-size counterweight trebuchet you get a huge advantage in just being able to easily position it one person can move this trebuchet to like change the angle that it's shooting or move it forward or backwards five or ten feet it's it's a really uh, simple construction and if you use bigger pieces of wood it'd be less less easy but still with two or three pieces pull you could still easily control it here we just gotta make sure these posts are all lined up so yeah like it's a, it's a little bit finicky to set up but all, all things made by hand are usually, you know, non-dimensional. You see it's all set up. And we need to start the work on the arm now. So we cut a 16-foot piece of... Um, I'm not sure what kind of tree it is exactly, but a big big log. Um, fresh, a freshly cut tree was important. It had to be still green so that the wood still had some flex in it to resist snapping. Here I'm cutting a little flat on the end so that it can accept the um, bracing posts that are going to be perpendicular to this arm. One of the great things about this is that the actual cutting of the of the timber doesn't take very long at all and the, um, the paper that I mentioned from the Experimental Archaeology Journal they really advocate that you can do this all from just cutting down trees to having a trebuchet in as little as 12 hours and I feel like that's pretty accurate with just a little bit of experience and a little skill like I say it's about a 16 foot long arm so that's probably the the only part of this whole trebuchet that's not really break not able to be broken down easily here we're cutting the diagonal supports the braces for this um, arm of the trebuchet So here I'm drilling through that flat of the on the end of the arm. You can see the whole length of the arm real quick. There's the trebuchet body over there. And so those diagonal braces will just be lashed there and actually we will use nails in that situation. Because we don't want to weaken the body of the arm by drilling a large holes and pegging through it. 
if this isn't strong enough, we can replace it with one of these. I just think this is going to give us a little easier time fitting these ends in without the plane at all. Spoiler alert, it was not strong enough, so we did end up replacing that those that 2x3 with something um, a lot sturdier. Without further ado, here it is. All right, we have our trebuchet together and we're ready for its first test firing. We've just put it on there. We haven't calibrated anything at all. We haven't done any math. We're just gonna pull these ropes and, and hope that the end of that flings up. We don't have it loaded or anything, so it's just gonna be a dry fire for the first test. All right. I'm gonna basically do a big squat and just go pull straight down. Ready? One. Two, three. It didn't release, but that's cool. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, better. Better. Stepping away. I can't look up. Now. Okay, third pull. Which side of this should be? Uh... Yeah, it's a good idea. Stand, stand where you are. And then are we pulling are back or down? We're pulling pretty much diagonal at it down, right? So like our back leg, our front leg is gonna move. Basically we're lunging like that. Ready? Three, two, one, pull! None of it released, did it? Fourth pull! That one was a better pull though. Ready? Three, two, one, pull! Oh, Careful. Alright? Yeah. We lost the nail in that arm. Drop. So, what happened there was a failure of the nail that connects the bracing arm to the actual arm. Um, and the lashing wasn't very secure. So we went ahead and replaced the lashing, replaced the arms with much sturdier ones, and we we're ready to give the trebuchet a second try. Um, we also, at this time, we had a crew of only three, and interestingly enough, three, by replacing the arm, making one, them for pull. moving the fulcrum, essentially, Woo! the <laughs> counterweight was now towards the firing end rather than on the, the okay, free end of the, the arm, trebuchet. right? So. That required us to have a third crew member just to hold down the arm before we're ready to fire it. So their job would have been to lower the trebuchet after we fire it. And you'll see how this works here. Tension, three, two, one, engage. Yeah. Hey, about the same, a little, bit, a little further. That one reached the gate, that's 50 feet. We need to straighten it more. Yeah. Up. Well, we don't have any ammo yeah, right do. now. We got a small piece. Okay. Smaller piece of ammo than what we've been using, but it'll work. Next thing we'll throw this hat. Huh? Throw my hat. Yeah. Down a little bit more um, towards the sky. Right? Towards so the sky. Well, towards the end of the arm, so more, yeah, more flat. Down. Down from your perspective, yes. Yeah. Okay. same distance, but that's the difference when we're calibrating it to go over a wall versus at it. Mm. Right? Okay. Do it again. And now that we knew that it worked, we just needed to see what kind of ranges it could achieve. 
And to do that, we needed a full crew. We needed four people on the ropes and one person on the arm just to weigh it down. So it's a cold Saturday morning. For some reason, it's bull, it's below freezing and it's starting to snow. It's been snowing all day and flurrying and it's windy, so you probably can't hear anything. Here's the shoes now, dangerous. Obviously, helmets are important. Okay, rock this time, pretty small one, just block of concrete. It's actually quite sharp, so if it hits anything, it's probably going to embed itself in it. Or them, whoever it hits. Okay, tension. Three, three, two, one, engage. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, you okay? I'm good. You want to do it off one? I didn't say that made it about. Okay, about, about 115, 120, 110, whatever feet. About 35 paces, which obviously we're not using accurate measuring tool. We got about a 20 pound rocket. three projectiles as quick as we can. This is the part where coordination is important. Okay, attention, three, two, one. Go see the damage. So all this right here is where one pumpkin ended up. And as you can see, uh, the trebuchet is between the car headlights and us. So it's a reasonably di reasonable distance. 
and looks like this is where the other trebuchet or the other pumpkin ended up got a wood wood block right there we threw that one we threw that and here's one of the other wood blocks that we threw and like i say trebuchet is right there so this is about 100 and maybe i think the best we got probably 150 feet so nothing crazy um, with some more calibration and some better ammo, like this went way farther than the wood did. So it's just a matter of calibration and tuning. But here it is. In all its glory.